Have you at times felt that pain, misunderstanding, gossip, and whatever life puts onto you are getting just too much to bear? Have you discovered when looking at the cross and its victim that your struggles vanishes into this enormous conflict with sin, pain, and misunderstanding? For every discomfort in life, you'll find a greater discomfort by looking at the cross and your pain becomes less when you look at his pain. When I look at Calvary, I see injustice, pain, and agony that is vastly greater than my little emotional discomfort. It's not so bad. As the penitent, penit, as the penitent sinner, contrite, because we are so proud, contrite before God discerns Christ's atonement in his behalf, and accepts this atonement as his only hope in this life and the future life, his sins are pardoned. What a recipe. Admitting your hopelessness and finding salvation. Here you don't earn. As long as we live we should make the salvation wrought for us at Calvary our only hope of eternal salvation. Lord, if I should wander, wrote the poet, from thy love away, let me see those blood drops shed for me that day. John 19, just a little revision, 1931, Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a, was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. 32, 33. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. 34, 35. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who had seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. So the old man, John, says, Please believe it. It happened. Your sins have been taken care, for, care of. 36, 37, for these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. A psalm, a psalmic psalm. And again another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. The Jews did not want Jesus to remain a moment longer on that cross. And as I said previously, Satan did not want it either. What would be the reason? What could be the reason? They received permission from Pilate to break the bones of the three so that the burial could not take place on the Sabbath. Hypocrites. At times we are hypocritical as well. With a huge hammer, the Roman soldiers smashes the legs of the converted thief. After a while he died. His head fell on his chest, but he was a saved sinner, saved by grace. Then the Roman soldier began smashing the, leg, the legs of the unconverted victim. He continues till this man also dies. When they came to the middle cross, the soldier said to the Jewish leaders and priests, He's dead. Stick your spear into his side and pierce his heart was the command. They shouted. He obeys the command. Can you see what happens? Blood and water flows from his side. 
John sees it, and years later he writes. 35. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. He wants us to believe. What do some of the medical fraternity uh, say about his death? As early as 1847, Dr. Strout, in his book Physical Cause of the Death of Christ, said that he died from a fra fractured heart. Died from a fractured heart. William Barclay says that the physical and emotional trauma was so bad that his heart was just torn apart. When the soldiers pierced his heart, blood and water began flow freely. With the death of Christ, the hopes of his disciples perished. Have you got perished hopes? They looked upon his closed eyelids. Can you see it? And drooping head like this. His hair matted with blood. What a sight. His pierced hands and feet and the anguish was indescribable. You know, I saw my father die and I saw my mother die. I think death is the ugliest thing in life. And here the one that only did good to his disciples and to the people died. And to the last they had not believed that he would die. I remember once a lady, she proclaimed to be a prophet, and a follower said, she says that she will not die. But she died. They could hardly believe that he was really dead. Have you come across a dead person? He's dead. You didn't expect it, but he's gone. Overwhelmed with sorrow, they did not recall his words for telling this very scene. Sometimes we are so heartbroken we, we cannot think retrospectively. Nothing that he had said now gave them comfort. Nothing. They saw only the cross and its bleeding victim. The future seemed dark with despair. Have you lost a loved one and your future looked dark with despair? Their faith in Jesus had perished, but never had they loved their Lord as now, looking at the corpse. Never did they love their Lord as at that moment. Never before had they so felt his worth and their need for his presence. You know, after my father's death, I went to the phone to phone, but then I realized he's gone. They say you'll never miss the water till the fountain runs dry. Even in death, Christ's body was very precious to his disciples. They longed to give him an honored burial, but knew not how to accomplish it. He had no funeral policy. He had nothing. He lost his few pieces of garments. He died naked. You're looking at a place in Jerusalem called the Hinnom Valley or Gehenna. This is where they dumped animals, criminals. There was a fire always burning and worms eating the corpses. Treason was the crime for which Jesus was condemned. For this offense, he was consigned to a burial, burial ground especially provided for such criminals. And they passed this place. They knew what was happening there. And they couldn't bear the thought of the body of Jesus dumped in the Hinnom Valley, eaten by worms and burnt by fire. Amongst corpses of animals and criminals. 
Can you see them up here on Calvary? How are they going to solve the burial problem of Jesus? Have you ever been in a situation like this? How will I ever solve this problem? The disciple John with the women from Galilee had remained at the cross. They wouldn't leave Jesus on the cross. They wanted to stay with him. They could not leave the body of their Lord to be handled by the unfeeling soldiers and buried in a dishonorable grave. Yet they could not prevent it. They wanted to show a last honor. Visiting the most expensive cemetery in Jerusalem, I suddenly thought of Jesus. If you're a Jew and you're buried on the Mount of Olives, that is a costly burial. What do you see on these tombs? Stones. So whenever you visit a relative in Jerusalem, when you leave, you a stone is placed on the tomb. So some of the tombs have got many stones, others just a few. In this emergency, God's timing, I like his timing, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came to the help of the disciples. Thank God for these two gentlemen. Both these men were members of the Sanhedrin, very important people, celebrities, coming to the simple disciples, and were acquainted with Pilate. So they had contact with Pilate as well. Both were men of wealth and influence, beautifully dressed, coming to the aid of the disciples. They were determined that the body of Jesus should have an honorable burial. The disciples were astonished to see these wealthy rulers as much interested as they themselves in the burial of their Lord. I think they just fell down on their knees and said, Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Have you experienced the perfect timing of God in your life? Many times at the last second, he walks into your situation. John 19, 38. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body of Jesus. 39.40 And Nicodemus, who had first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Oh. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen, with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Can you see this action? It smells good. Most expensive linen in Jerusalem. The most honored in Jerusalem could not have been shown more respect in death. This was the only respect he actually received. But it was too late. Don't bring your flowers to the graveside. Give it now. Don't compliment the deceased loved ones. Do it now. The disciples were astonished to see these wealthy rulers as much interested as they themselves in the burial of the Lord. Gently and reverently, they removed with their own hands the body of Jesus from the cross. Can you see it? I think they wept so many tears. Their emotions, their tears of sympathy fell fast as they looked upon his bruised and lacerated form. Look 
Just look at how they treated him. Joseph owned a new tomb hewn in a rock. And according to my research, this is the garden tomb, this is the place. Unless some more archaeological evidence surfaces, I stick to, uh, to this place. This he was reserving for himself. And let me tell you, uh, he reserved the best tomb, I think, in Jerusalem for himself. But it was near Calvary. Calvary is just next to the garden tomb. And now prepared it for Jesus. So he fixes up everything for Jesus to be buried there. The body, together with the spices brought by Nicodemus, was carefully wrapped in a linen sheet, and the Redeemer was born to the tomb. Can you see them carrying the corpse? From Calvary to the tomb, in close proximity. When you visit the sites, you, you appreciate what the Bible says. I don't think there was much discussion. Were you a pallbearer carrying somebody to the tomb, to the grave? This was a sad and very, very solemn occasion for these pallbearers. There are times that we feel we cannot talk. There the three disciples straightened the mangled limbs and folded the bruised hands upon the pulseless press. The Galilean woman came to see that all had been done that could be done for the lifeless form of the beloved teacher. The women were last at the cross and the last at the tomb of Christ. So typical of careful women. Are you married to a careful wife? We appreciate careful women. While the evening shades were gathering, sun was setting. Mary Magdalene and the other Marys lingered about the resting place of their Lord, shedding tears of sorrow over the fate of him whom they loved. Luke 23, 55, 56. And the, and the woman who, who had come with him from Galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. This was done by Joseph, Nicodemus and John, the disciple. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Who was the member of the Sanhedrin that visited Jesus by night? And what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? He says, man, you're a rabbi. Let me take you back to an incident in the life of Israel in the desert. John 3, 14 and 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Uh, Nicodemus, you remember this incident? Even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up above the earth, below heaven, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I've been to the place where Israel were bitten by snakes in the Araba, just below Petra and the Mount Hor. You know, they started to complain and moan. And then, snakes came venomous snake and uh, they died <clears throat> and Moses provided an antidote all they had to do was to look and the look meant healing the look prevented death and Jesus discussed this discussed it with Nicodemus because Nicodemus thought, according to his theology, that you must earn salvation. You cannot earn salvation, Nicodemus. Look. 
when they crucify me, look at the cross and you will be healed from the snake that bit you, the snake of legalism. Look and live, Nicodemus. On that Sabbath when Christ lay in the grave, Nicodemus had opportunity for reflection. Are you reflecting at times? Are you rushing through life? You've got to pause and reflect. A clearer light now illuminated his mind. And the words which Jesus had spoken to him were no longer mysterious. You don't earn salvation. You accept salvation. He felt that he had lost much by not connecting himself with the Savior during his life. <coughs> He recalled the Calvary events, the prayer of Christ for his murderers and his answers to the petition of the dying thief. Nicodemus was there, spoke to the heart of the learned counselor. Again he looked upon the Savior in his agony Again he heard that last cry. It is finished, spoken like the words of a conqueror, the Lesai. Again he beheld the reeling earth, the darkened heavens, the rent veil. He heard that sound, the shivered rocks, and his faith was forever established. Oh, God is going to welcome Nicodemus one of these days. The event that destroyed the hopes of the disciples convinced Joseph and Nicodemus of the divinity of Jesus. Their fears were overcome by the courage of a firm and unwavering faith. In what state of mind were the enemies of Christ after his death on the cross? Now that the frenzy of excitement was past, the image of Christ would intrude upon their minds. They never had peace of mind. They beheld him as he stood serene and uncomplaining before his enemies. They saw it. Suffering without a murmur, their taunts and abuse. All the events of his trial and crucifixion came back to them with an overpowering conviction that he was the Son of God. He felt that he might at any time stand before them, the accused to become the accuser, the condemned to condemn, the slain to demand justice in the death of his murderers. This was going on in their mind. They were convinced, but they wouldn't accept his gift of forgiveness. They could rest little upon the Sabbath. They sang in the temple, but they had no peace of mind. Though they would not step over the Gentiles' threshold for fear of defilement, yet they held a council concerning the body of Christ. Death and the grave must hold him whom they had crucified. Matthew 27, 62 and 63. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that while he was still alive, and how that the deceiver said, After three days I will rise. They ignored the statement before, but now they are worried. Just say this is going to happen. What are we going to do? 64, therefore, <clears throat> command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead, so the last deception will be worse than the first. 65, Pilate said to them, you have a God. Go your way, make it a secure 
as you know how. Never was a tomb so securely guarded as the tomb where Jesus was buried. Tell me, if you had to give them points for their brilliant idea, how much would it be? Minus zero. Let us never underestimate the prophecies of the Bible and the power of God. The priests gave directions for securing the sepulchre. A great stone had been placed before the opening, weighing tons. This is the only example that I've discovered of a stone rolling before the tomb. It's uh, the place where Herod buried his relatives. It's just behind the King David Hotel, the YMC in Jerusalem, and she's pushing the stone. So they had to add the strongest, biggest soldiers to put the stone in front of the tomb. Across the stone they placed cords securing the ends to the solid rock and sealing them with a Roman seal. Wow! He'll never escape from his tomb. The stone could not be moved without breaking the seal. So nobody could come and steal his body. A guard of 100 soldiers, 100 soldiers, was then stationed around the sepulchre to prevent it from being tampered with. The best of Rome said nobody will come from this tomb. Do you think the devil and his agents are able to keep Jesus in the tomb? We don't know how many demons were also there. And the devil himself was there. And they decided that Christ will not come from this tomb, as it happened with Moses when Christ came to resurrect him. Matthew 27, verse 66. So they went and made the tomb secure. This was, by the way, on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was broken by those who pretended that they keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is more than a set of rules. The Sabbath is called the delight. The Sabbath reminds us of our salvation that was wrought at Calvary. It's a celebration of deliverance. They never went into that rest, the Pharisees. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. And I think, I gave the guard some money and said, please do a good job. He was sealed as securely in his tomb as if he were to remain there throughout all time. So weak men counseled and planned. Little did these murderers realize the uselessness of their efforts. But by their action, God was glorified. You know, God can change the curse into a blessing. Have you discovered this? Just wait and you'll see how it changes from a curse to a blessing. Let's visit the garden tomb. Beautiful, quiet spot, not far from the, far from the Damascus Gate. So let's walk in here and meditate. It's so important to meditate. Here's Loretta, she says, The very efforts made to prevent Christ's resurrection are the most convincing arguments in its proof. I rejoice in the way God deals with crises. I told this group that came with me one year, the greater the number of soldiers placed around the tomb, the stronger would be the testimony that he had risen. During Holy Communion, we read from Psalms chapter 2. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing, referring to the event that happened here? 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. According to research, they also held communion with foot washing at the tomb. And here you see an example of what we once did there. The bread and the wine, unfermented bread, unfermented wine. So wonderful to sit next to Calvary opposite the tomb and celebrate the Lord's Supper. You're looking down at the huge cistern that uh, Joseph of Arimathea built there. Look at this. Huge water cistern. Only wealthy people like Joseph of Arimathea could afford this place. So archaeology convinces me that this was the place. They also discovered, excavated this wine press. So there must have been a vineyard as well. Isaiah 63 verse 3. I've trodden the wine press alone. When I stood here, I thought of this verse. And from the people, no one was with me. Are you lonesome? Roman guards and Roman arms were powerless to confine the Lord of life within his tomb. The hour of his release was near. Angels were excited. Jesus Christ declared with power to be the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead. Romans 1 verse 4. I took this picture in the garden too. Next time, we will hear more about the glorious resurrection of Christ from this very tomb. Thank you, Father, for a resurrection. Thank you for a high priest, an advocate that deals with our sin problem in heaven. Be with us as we contemplate the great theme of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.